As many of you know, I've always enjoyed talking about different characters in the Cosmere and I usually like finding different ways to approach discussing them and their arcs. A short while ago I did that in the form of a video comparing two of the Cosmere's most well known characters, Kaladin and Vin. I really liked that format and it seems all of you guys enjoyed it too. So today I'd like to consider and compare another two characters from the Cosmere with one another. First we have Dalinar from the Stormlight Archive, a well-known and beloved leader in the world of Roshar with a not so flattering past. Next we have Rathen, a high-ranking priest in a dominant faith on the world of Cell, with more good in him than what first seems apparent. We'll be looking at multiple different aspects of each, including their backstories, how they grow, their personalities, relationships with others, and of course their combat abilities. And of course, this comparison is very subjective and up to interpretation. So before we start, why don't you put in the comments who you think will win? But without blathering on for too long, let's get started. Backstory So let's start with Dalinar. Dalinar's backstory is probably one of the darkest in the Cosmere. When he was a young lord, he was never going to be the head of his house, as that was his brother Gavilar's responsibility. This resulted in him being able to pursue things that he enjoyed without the weight of responsibility on his shoulders. Unfortunately, he enjoyed little more than violence. During Gavilar's conquest of Aleskar, Dalinar became his top general and was renowned for his skill in battle and ruthless strategy. Dalinar feared no man and cared only for the next fight. He became so ruthless and dangerous that many would surrender before the fight even began if they knew that he was involved. He earned himself the name of the Blackthorn and became one of Roshar's most well-known warlords. Then, when he was in his middle years, he made one of the greatest mistakes of his life. During a siege of a rebellious lord, Dalinar's wife, Evi, pleaded with him to seek resolution without violence and instead to do so diplomatically. He, of course, refused to listen, which caused her to go to the enemy in secret to try and accomplish that very task. Unfortunately, Dalinar had no idea of this and after being ambushed by the rebels, he gave the order to set the whole town on fire. Only afterwards did he realize that his wife was in the town and that guilt would haunt him for years to come. He turned to alcohol and became drunk at every opportunity. It was so bad at one point that his own brother had to hide the palace stores of wine from Dalinar to keep him sober. When Gavilar was eventually assassinated, Dalinar blamed himself for being too drunk to have saved him. That's when he approached the Night Watcher and asked her to remove his memories of his wife so that he could start anew. Rathen's backstory, on the other hand, is not as well fleshed out due to the scope of Elantris itself. We do, however, learn that he has just as much of a regretful and bloody past. Rathen was a priest in the Dorethi faith and was charged with converting countries to their faith so that the dominion of their empire would spread. He was arrogant and headstrong in his youth, which led to his own big mistake. After being charged with converting the Duladal Republic, he did everything in his power to accomplish his goal. Unfortunately, the way he went about it was reckless and caused such a civil unrest that the entire nation fell into civil war. At the end of this revolution, the Republican class was killed in its entirety and a monarch was set in their place. Rathen had accomplished his goals of converting the country as the new monarch replaced the old religion with that of Shu Dereth, but he would forever regret the blood he had on his hands because of it. Thus, he made it his mission to ensure that all his future endeavors of a similar nature would be done peacefully and tactfully enough to avoid unnecessary bloodshed. Similar to Dalinar, Rathen was a man who used his power for violence and quickly came to regret it. And like Dalinar, the story we read of him when the novel starts is his attempt at redemption. So with all of that being said, and weighing up the different backstories, I'd have to give the win to Dalinar here. Unfortunately, we don't see enough of Rathen's backstory for him to have won against Dalinar, but that doesn't mean it isn't well executed in its own right. Growth Throughout the novels, Dalinar's growth is outstanding. When we first meet him, he seems to be a very honourable, yet very broken man who wants nothing more than to be the kind of man his brother once was. When we learn of his past and the pain he'd been through, as well as the pain he'd caused, it puts a lot of his trauma into perspective. With that as the baseline, we actually see Dalinar grow and work towards that goal. 
He wants to be an honourable man and he wants to help save his world from destruction. He follows honourable codes and works on improving himself throughout the books. By the end of Oathbringer, we see an almost completely different man than at the beginning of Way of Kings. By that point, Dalinar had overcome his demons and faced his trauma. He rose above the shadows of his past and resolved to keep moving forward. He would not be held back by the things that haunted him and he would not let his mistakes define who he became. He strived to become a better man and he did so masterfully. Rathen's growth is much more subtle than that of Dalinar. When we first meet him, we see that he is actively working on avoiding further bloodshed, but he is still a priest of a very authoritarian religion. He still tries to impose his religion into a free country so that the influence of the Fjordal Empire could spread. And until the last 10% of the book, that remains his goal. He does become slightly disillusioned with his faith and those that control it. He sees the anger and hate that can be spread through it and he sees the strain it causes on the populace. However, it is not until the end that he finally makes the biggest change. He realizes that his faith is not the problem, but rather the hierarchy on which it is built. Shudereth isn't the problem, but the Emperor is. Rathen had seen that his faith can bring happiness and peace to the lives of people, but that part of it had been corrupted and twisted to better suit the interests of those in power. In a way, Brandon Sanderson seems to have written a fairly scathing critique of organized religion and religious states in Elantris, and Rathen is the lens through which we see this unfold. Regardless, when Rathen realizes this, he fights against his own clergymen because of what they had done to bastardize the true essence of Shu Dereth. Overall, I'd give the point to Dalinar again. Rathen's perspective is interesting and important, don't get me wrong, but in terms of personal growth and change, Dalinar takes the cake. We're actually there for every step of Dalinar's journey and we see him grow and change in real time. This puts him ahead of Rathen in this regard and earns him the point here. Personality Dalinar has a pretty blunt and clean-cut personality. He's someone who strongly believes in his cause and who's always striving to improve. He values being honourable and just and often wants little more than to help those around him and atone for his past mistakes. And while this is an interesting dynamic to observe between Dalinar and other characters, especially characters like Taravangian, it doesn't necessarily make for a very strong personality. In a vacuum, sure, his personality seems pretty strong, but place him besides other characters like Kaladin, Yasna, Shallan, Adolin, anyone like that, and you'll see that they outshine him every time. And it's not a bad thing. Often we do need characters who are more muted and stoic so that the personalities of those around them can shine appropriately in comparison. Dalinar was never meant to be a character with an outstanding personality. His arc was about personal growth and moving on from past mistakes, that's the focus of his character, not his personality. And Dalinar is still an amazing character regardless. However, if you look at Rathen, his personality is a lot stronger. Rathen is opinionated, headstrong, and very cunning. Had Dilaf not derailed his plans, he likely would have achieved his goal if given enough time, but he would have done so by using his shrewd mind. Rathen strongly believes in his faith and seems like he can be a genuinely compassionate character when he interacts with other characters. He does his duty without complaint but still worries about those his actions would affect. And as we compare Dalinar to those characters around him, so too can we compare Rathen to those he interacts with. And I think I can confidently say that Rathen outshines most other characters in Elantris. His interactions with Serene prove this, as he is often the character with deep internal struggles that he's trying to overcome whilst fighting for what he believes is a righteous cause. And while he and Raiden never really interact much, you can still see that Rathen is a much stronger personality than he is. So with all that said, in the department of personality, I definitely give the point to Rathen. While he is definitely as stoic as Dalinar, his personality still shines through a lot more. And, as I said, it's not a bad thing if Dalinar's personality isn't as strong or vivid, because that wouldn't really serve his character arc much. Anyway, as you can see, Rathen is beginning to catch up here, so let's see how they fare in the next section. Relationships And here we have a section that I think most people will agree with my outcome. 
Dalinar's whole arc, his whole character struggle, has been based on his relationships with the people around him. All of his mistakes and victories have been based on him either messing up his relationship with others due to his own shortcomings, or repairing his relationship with others after facing his inner demons. In the way of kings, Dalinar's big relational struggle was between himself, his sons, and the other high princes. He had to essentially prove himself to all of them before the relationship could be fixed. In words of Radiance, Dalinar gets heavily tested when an old friend and comrade, Bright Lord Amaram, has his honor called into question and Dalinar has to learn how to trust his instincts despite how his relationship with the man makes him feel. In Oathbringer, Dalinar's relationship not only with the leaders of the world gets tested as he recalls his past, but his relationship with Navani and even with himself undergoes severe strain. And while we didn't see him much in Rhythm of War, we did see glimpses of him trying to build a better relationship with his nephew Gavinor, his niece Yasna, and his son Renarin. Dalinar's whole arc has been underpinned by his relationships with those around him. Rathen, on the other hand, does not really have this at play at all. Rathen is a lone wolf, a solo agent. He enters the story without any acquaintances, and the relationships he forms are usually shallow or short-lived. His interactions with Serene, while interesting, don't really go beyond her showing him a different perspective on matters. His relationship with Dilaf is all kinds of toxic and crazy, but that's just because of how Dilaf is. The point is that Rathen doesn't really show much of his relationships with others, and while not a bad thing for the kind of character Rathen is, it does leave him in the dust when compared to Dalinar. In my mind, it isn't really much of a competition. So I'll definitely be giving the win to Dalinar here. Rathen is a fascinating character with very interesting moments and perspectives, but it doesn't hold much of a candle when comparing his relationships in Elantris with that of Dalinar in the Stormlight Archive. Point goes to Dalinar. Combat Now, this is the section where many people may bite my head off for my decision, but hear me out. Let's look at the two combatants and their abilities and then consider who is most likely to win in a physical confrontation. Dalinar is an old soldier, hardened through years of war and too many battles to realistically count. He's the Blackthorn and almost nobody doubts his combat abilities. If I remember correctly, it's widely considered that in his prime, Dalinar was probably the strongest fighter known on Roshar. Dalinar is also a Bondsmith Radiant. He has access to the surges of adhesion and tension. While these two surges on their own seem very ill-fitted for combat, and they are, Bondsmiths seem to be able to utilize them in very unique ways. In the closing chapters of Rhythm of War, we see how Ishar is able to essentially destroy a whole squad of Radiants without struggle, and how he almost steals Dalinar's bond to the Stormfather. Clearly, Bondsmith Radiants have incredible potential and power. Now, while all of that sounds like Dalinar should be the automatic winner here, I actually don't think he would be. First of all, Dalinar's prime fighting years are well behind him. He's older now, and that's also a large reason why he opts to be more of a backstage general than a frontline combatant as the books progress. In addition, while Bondsmiths seem very powerful, Dalinar isn't. He hasn't even come close to mastering his abilities, and he's actively looking for someone to teach him how to use them. What have we seen him do as a Bondsmith before? He can learn languages instantly, he once utilized the Stormfather's essence in a panic, but that was a non-combat situation and he has begun to see the bonds that link people together. He's very much a novice with his abilities, and at no point have we seen him utilize them well in an actual fight. Now, let's look briefly at Hrathen. He's clearly combat trained and strong. I mean, his religious garb is a suit of armor for Pete's sake. He has some pretty powerful abilities given to him from his tie in the Dakor monasteries. He's managed to topple nations with his cunning mind and is clearly a very strategic thinker, is also clearly in his prime fighting years, or at the very least very closely behind it. So while Dalinar is an incredible fighter, he's no longer in his prime, in fact he's far from it. While Dalinar is a bondsmith, he has very little if not no combat application for the bit of power he has learned to control. So while he definitely could give Rathen a run for his money, I think that Rathen's youth and Dakor powers would give him the decisive edge in battle. Dalinar does have some saving grace in that he can heal injuries with Stormlight, but unfortunately it won't save him for long. 
Stormlight runs out eventually while the Dakor is powered by the same force as Aeon Dor, which is essentially inexhaustible. So while Dalinar would definitely keep the fight going for a long time and would be a near perfect match for Rathen, I think that Rathen's abilities edge him out the victory on this one. So in conclusion, and while many others may not agree with me, I'm giving the win for combat to Rathen. In my opinion, he's the better fighter with more of a chance at victory than Dalinar. And that's not even counting that Dalinar has become a lot less involved with direct combat than Rathen is. And while I still think that Dalinar is the stronger character overall, he doesn't really stack up in a fight compared to the Derethi Priest. And with that final score in, we can see that the overall win goes to Dalinar. Dalinar is definitely the stronger character overall, and has a lot more potential than Rathen. Rathen does have his strengths and is definitely the strongest character in Elantris as far as I'm concerned, but Dalinar is by far the stronger character of the two. So with that, I'd gladly give the win to Dalinar in this episode of Cosmia vs. Who do you think should have won? Do you agree with me, or am I being an idiot who doesn't know what he's talking about? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. Anyway, that's been it from me for today guys. Thank you very much for watching, my name has been Raven, and I will see you all next time. Take care everybody.